So we are uh, here today in day two of our executive training seminar on evidence-based policy making. With us today is Tracy Brown. She's director of uh, the organization uh, Sense About Science, who are intensively working on establishing the evidence on the demand for evidence in society and uh, preparing and uh, developing tools for citizens and civil society organizations to engage with evidence in policies. Um, Tracy, thank you very much for being here. It's thank a great you. pleasure. It's been a wonderful day. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, we discussed a lot about your approach and your concept. Um, and what I found very interesting is that in the meantime, um, your idea of transparency of evidence can be labelled as something like a concept in itself. What is behind that? Well, it was quite new transparency of evidence when we first presented that at the end of 2015. Um, people have been talking a lot about the evidential basis for policy and concerned about you know, the specific development of a policy base in areas like education or drug policy, for example. Transparency of evidence is a prior question. So, the question is, can citizens actually tell what government is trying to do and why? You know, is there a chain of reasoning that we can follow? Which means we don't need to be expert in transport policy or any particular area, but we can at least understand the relationship between the evidence and the proposal that's being put before us. Hmm. So it's not that much about uh, judging about the validity of the argument or the evidence, but the accessibility of the evidence for people who are interested in knowing more about the justification of policies, for example. It's absolutely about judging okay. the, uh, the accessibility, because that's a prior thing. How can we begin to have a conversation about whether or not we feel the weight that's being put on the evidence is fair and reasonable, whether the evidence itself can bear that weight if we want to make a big decision about resources, for example. We can't begin to judge that unless we know what it is. Do and we know what, it's, what role it's playing. playing. Do you think that this is more a, a governance tool? Or can this indeed make policy making more legitimate, more accountable, more transparent? If governments have got the habit of publishing and sharing their, uh, their evidence and, and the basis, their reports and so on, then when it comes to those kind of moments of crisis, and every government has a moment of crisis, whether on vaccines or agricultural policy, moments of trustworthiness uh, being called into question, then that's a point at which people can go and look for themselves and investigate and have that discussion. The problem is, if you suddenly rush out your evidence under pressure, you're doing it into a very sceptical, very perhaps cynical context already, and it's of minimal value at that point. So the habit of publishing evidence is really important. But Gabby, what I'd also emphasise is that it's a very good discipline within government to be thinking about your end user, if you like, your, that, that public engagement, not thinking your end user point is when you brief the minister about the proposal, but your end user point is actually the public engaging with this and through the, all the mediums of, 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 you know, mi of, of representatives and media and so on. Mm. Um, but thinking that is the conversation ultimately that we're trying to have. Yeah. And why should it be the case that we as a citizenry are being asked to make judgments about policies where we only have half the information How, as the people on the inside? Absolutely. How and I do, what I do perceive is that this is not only a shift in how we design policies, but also how we uh, as citizens understand our efforts um, and our engagement in understanding policies. Um, so how can civil society and organization like yours support this shift from assessing the outcomes and the impact of policies to making the wealth of information that went into the design of policies more accessible and more open? Well, the transparency of evidence framework is designed, it's in human language. It, it speaks in human, not in policy language. Um, and it's designed very much alongside uh, organisations that we've been working with over many years to try and get a better understanding of evidence and access to it. And it asks simple questions at each point in diagnosis, proposal, implementation and evaluation can we see what government's trying to do and why? Is it values-based? Is it evidence-based? And what's the mix? And that 
is a sort of directed towards government, but it's also a tool which anyone can use, an individual, an organisation can use to assess the transparency of any particular policy. And there's lots of guidance now available to do that. We've done it for two years now with a spot check, which means we've we've been through the pain of trying to ass <laughs> apply it across every government department ourselves. Yeah. Um, the Regulatory Scrutiny Board uh, at the um, at EU level has also been looking at how to apply it. So mm. there's a lot of experimentation being going on. At the level of the, the, the sort of wider citizenry um, and how people uh, interact with policy, a crucial point here is we're not just talking about the policy interested. We're not talking about people who follow policy as part of their jobs or hobbies or whatever. We're talking about those moments that you have, and it may just be one in your life. You may be a farmer in a flood area, mm. and that one moment in your life when you really need to understand what is the government's flood policy and why uh, could be crucial. And so at that moment, you need to be able to follow that through and ask that question. It should be available to you. And that's what we're talking about. We're not looking at kind of levels of demand here. We're looking about that crucial accountability relationship that should be underpinning any policy proposal. Yeah, great. That, that was actually something that I also saw in the discussion, um, that participants realised that it's not just about changing just or introducing just another accompanying process, but enabling citizens when it comes to the moment that they need to know something to be there. And I do think that the discussion that we had really showed that, that people saw that there's benefit and there's need to have these instruments. Yeah. I do think we had really an inspired discussion. We did. People really we did. engaged in discussion uh, of your framework. I also think that pe some might be inspired to use it. I hope so. The fascinating thing for me was people putting it in their own context. Yeah. And that, was, that included rural Bangladesh. Um, it included thinking about areas like anti-corruption. And there were all sorts of ways in which people saw that they could use this. Because fundamentally, it's about opening up what is currently a very closed process of how the government analyzes and thinks and opening that up for us to engage in. The other really important point here was values, was mm. the whole point about this, about this framework is it's about being honest and clear yep. about the reasoning. So where values have played a role, that's perfectly fine. We just need to know. Exactly. What we, what we don't want is a situation where something which is values-based or perhaps done for, um, uh, for religious or uh, electoral reasons is presented to us as being based on the evidence when it isn't. Yeah. What we need is a clear analysis of what the evidence is and how it's played a role. And then there are so many points where we all might get engaged in contesting that or agreeing with it or understanding it. Exactly, to enable understanding rather than judging yeah. and by that means entering into discourse. Yeah. It was such an inspiring session. Thank you very much, Tracy, for having been here. And I'm, I truly, I'm, I'm, I'm truly convinced we stay in touch. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you.